ready to go? Yeah, let's do it. All right. All right. Stunning. Yeah. You ready to go? Yeah. I said stunning. Well, you were like, oh, yeah. Oh, what, what do you want? <laughs> Expectations are not good. Expectations are for the devil. You know, she obviously put something on, she shows it. So therefore she was expecting a reaction. And listen, respectfully, I get it. You know, you put something cute on, you know what I mean? You want your man to tell you that you look good. You want him to be all up in your grill, all up in your space. I get it. I completely get what she was looking for. But sadly, expectations won't always be, won't always be met. And when they're not met, you just gotta take it on the chin rather than be sensitive about it. That's just the way it is sometimes. But hey, we continue. I don't want to be the naggy girlfriend and just be like, oh, you got to learn this and learn that. But now I've stopped soft partnering so for granted at times. And it's just like, yeah, she's got a sexy outfit on or she look great, whatever. And I don't know. I just want to feel like desired, hot. So here's the thing. This whole soft partnering nonsense is where she went completely wrong. If she had never done this whole soft partnering flipping nonsense in the first place, then maybe the things that he needed to learn he would have learned them by now. And here's the thing, you know, if you want your partner to learn about you and learn about the things that you like, it is important that you are authentic from the very first time that you meet. If you are somebody who you really, someone who you truly know you're not, well then guess what? They're never gonna learn the things that you want them to learn. They're never gonna know the things about you that you want them to know. So therefore, when it comes to having expectations, guess what? Those expectations are already going to be met because you have set a certain standard of who you are by your soft partnering. This whole soft partnering nonsense shouldn't even exist. I mean, listen, until she said it, I never knew it was even a thing. And to be fair, I was happy not knowing that it was a thing. But now I know it's a thing. It's crazy. But now I look back, some of the, I'm like, damn, she was trying to soft partner me. And that's why we didn't work because when she started to show two colors, <laughs> man was like, yeah, I'm out. Bye. Because at the end of the day, the whole time somebody else was trying to soft part of me, do you know what was going on? I was wasting my own time because I was making all of these efforts. All of these efforts. Do you see what I'm saying? Okay. Based on who I thought she was. And then boom, bam. She was like, yeah, nah, 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 nah. You know, I'm just, I was, I will just show you my soft side. Just that she didn't call it soft partnering. She just said, yeah, I, I'm just showing my soft side. <laughs> well, guess what? Sometimes that soft side, that soft partnering stuff can easily shoot you in the foot because if somebody is getting to know you for you, it's like, for example, you know how like there were some women in this world that they, there were some women in this world when they say, I remember when we first started dating, you used to take me here and take me there. We should do this, we should do that. We were so active, everyone in our relationships. You see, this is why I started telling all the guys that I know. Started saying, yo, mandem, when you introduce yourself to a chick at the very beginning, okay, to a woman at the very beginning, all right, please do not take them out on continuous dates and continuous these and things and that, because if you cannot keep up that lifestyle, it is going to bite you in the back at some point when she's not happy with you. And she's, and she's not going to be happy with you a lot of the time. And she's always going to be like, oh, I remember those times. Listen, I don't live for, I remember those times. I live for, babe, I can't believe we're still doing what we used to do at the very beginning. You know what I'm saying? The, 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 the standard that you set at the very beginning, that foundation at the very beginning of dating is going to define what your arguments are potentially going to be about. and going to define the things going to be brought up in the future. And also going to define the appreciation of your relationship. So if somebody says to me, hey, I can't believe we're still doing these things, they're appreciating it. But if somebody's saying to you, oh, remember when we used to do that? To be honest with you, the men and women who do do that, remember, it's all on you. It's your fault because you set up a standard that does not exist. Everybody loves the honeymoon phase and everybody wants that to stay alive, especially when you're going through bad times. <laughs> but then the less though, that's just how I see it, you know what I'm saying? I know I'm right. <laughs> but let's continue with this soft party nonsense. Like, they feel like, ooh, yeah, like. Don't smell it. How can I not smell something that I'm eating? I don't think I'm full <laughs> I don't 
I personally find it quite disrespectful that obviously she's in Iceland. Obviously, she's he's introduced her to, to, to some um, shark food thing that's traditional there. And instead of just giving her an actual bite and giving her an actual try, she's already judging it, already giving the uh, 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 uh. And sadly, Americans and the Brits are known for being snobby when they go to other cultures and when it comes to trying other people's foods and way of living. You know, it is being said that there is stereotype, there is a stereotype around Americans and British people. And Corona is doing it right here, right now. At the end of the day, don't be asking to live the life that they that, that he lives there. And then all of a sudden, when the food gets presented to you, you're like, uh, 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 and you haven't even even tried it yet. Sometimes food doesn't taste nice. I mean, sometimes food doesn't necessarily smell nice, but it doesn't mean it's not going to be nice. I'm just saying, personally, I found her attitude in this scene rather disrespectful. But anyway, pu purely because she was judging the book before even tasting the book. I know you can't taste book, but I was trying to flip the, the saying. You can't get a book by its cover. You, you know what I'm saying? You know, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's continue. I don't know how to word this, but like, do they know black people? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. So, yeah. Ariel. They're like, yup, no. I don't want black grandbabies and I don't like her. I hate the fact that she brought this up, to be honest, if there was no need for it. If this man is happily dating you, happily bring you to, uh, happily allowing you to, to, no, happily wants you to move to Iceland, and... He's making the first ever woman to meet his parents. What does that tell you? It tells you that he doesn't give a damn whether or not they're going to like you or not because of your pigmentation. But most importantly, it's also telling you that they're not going to care about your pigmentation. Otherwise, he wouldn't do it. He wouldn't put himself in a position where he's going to finally introduce a woman to his parents if he knew that she was, they wasn't going to like it because of your pigmentation. This is nonsense. This storyline right here, if you ask me personally, it's a bit of a sticky one, because I know TLC are known for trying to push these kind of narratives sometimes. But it's a bit of a sticky one because, you see, Corona's the kind of person that would generally bring up this topic. You know what I mean? With or without the production getting involved. And that's why I'm, that's why I don't know if this was her idea or their idea. You know what I'm saying? Because she gives me that type of energy. Oh, is it because I'm... Mm -hmm. We don't need that energy. End of the day. And also on top of that, why would you pack up your bags, decide to move to Iceland, knowing full well... Okay, no, not knowing whether or not his parents are going to accept you or not. Make that make sense. You would have had this conversation earlier on. In fact, I would have expected her to actually have this conversation, to be fair with you. Unless her soft partner, obviously, you know, made her forget this conversation. Mm. Either way, though, I don't care for this storyline. I don't want to hear about none of this nonsense. Come on now. For other reasons, not even just me being a color, like, fun. So it does make me worried if his parents actually don't like me and didn't want me to join their family, I don't think Inky would go against his parents. If, like, they don't like me, that would be a big, like, hurdle in things. And they'll be like, whoa, so. I mean, listen, at the end of the day, again, I, do you know what? F that. Let's go back a step. Why would you decide to move to Iceland without even meeting his parents first to know that they're going to like you? Why didn't you do this step before you decided to move there? How about that? That's the real question. Because this right here is just pointless. You're, just, you're basically telling us that you wasted a whole trip to go and see this man, not knowing whether or not his parents are going to be happy with you or not. But I don't believe for one second that this conversation wasn't had before, to be honest with you. You know, I generally believe that this probably did happen and they just put it in here. I hope they're putting this into the storyline, but if they're not, god damn, their relationship is just as bad as everybody else's. Huh. Huh. <laughs> Nonetheless, though, let me know your thoughts. Let me know your opinions. We can talk about it. <laughs> Don't forget to like, subscribe, and of course, peace.